right now on Elon Local News. The law that some Elon students break every day, putting themselves in potential danger. I mean, nobody really monitors it. You just kind of walk across the tracks and go on with your day. Elon's 24-hour dance marathon may be over, but the fight still continues. It is something that I don't even think these students can fully grasp just how big this is. And later in the show, we'll have tips on managing your bank account. Elon Local News starts right now. Welcome to Elon Local News for April 13th, 2015. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jasmine Turner. And I'm Gary Grumbach. We begin with continuing coverage of an Elon University student's sexual offense trial. Testimony continued this morning in the case against Jeremy Jacob, a former Elon student charged with two cases of second degree sexual offense. An Elon Town police report from 2014 says the alleged incident occurred early in the morning on January 18th of that year. Court documents from the time of the arrest confirm the alleged victim is a female Elon student who is still currently enrolled at the university. This morning in court, Jacob, who is pleading not guilty, said the alleged victim did not make any verbal or physical objection to his advances that night. Text messages between the two were used as evidence in the case. In North Carolina, second-degree sexual offense is a Class C felony. The state's definition of second-degree sexual offense is if a person engages in a sexual act with another person by force and against the will of the victim. It also includes cases when the victim is mentally disabled, mentally incapacitated, or physically helpless, and the person performing the act knows or should reasonably know those facts. For more information on this trial, check out elonlocalnews.com. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and according to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, one in five women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted while in college. Our Meredith Stutz is in the studio with more on what Elon is doing this month. Meredith? Thanks, Jasmine. Many students are joining together to make a chance to make a change and to give victims a voice right here on campus. This week event started today with the Clothesline Project hosted by Space. Students were encouraged to hang up t-shirts on a clothesline outside of the Mosley Center. President of Effect Rachel Lewis says the shirts helped to promote awareness. maybe don't want to be that visible. People who just kind of want to get their message out here. And I think the value with these t-shirts is there are a bunch of different stories and them all being lined up together and very visible creates this element of solidarity. As for the rest of the week, tomorrow there will be a Supporting Survivors whiteboard campaign during College Coffee. There is also a Hoops for Survivors basketball tournament from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Oaks Basketball Court. On Wednesday, there will be a Consent Is campaign with Sparks and Mosley from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And on Thursday night is the annual Take Back the Night March. For a full list of events of the week, check out our Facebook page. In the studio, I'm Meredith Stutz. Thanks, Meredith. Now moving to something you might do every day, cutting across the train tracks by Trollinger Avenue. While this act might seem simple and harmless, it's illegal and extremely dangerous. Our Michelle Alfini has more. North Carolina law says anytime someone crosses railroad tracks anywhere other than a marked crossing, it's considered trespassing. It's not that they're horrible, you know, law-breaking people. They see, uh, I'm here, I want to go there. Uh, Nearest place, go across right here and, and go right on across. And it's a law most Elon students aren't familiar with. I mean, nobody really monitors it. You just kind of walk across the tracks and go on with your day. Police say people cross these tracks all the time because it's easier than going to a marked intersection. But if you're not paying attention, the results can be deadly. People got their earbuds in, they're talking on the phone. Those levels of distraction really are a, a primate. Uh, a, a significant cause of those railway accidents that we do see with pedestrians. In the past year, there were 25 people struck and killed by trains in North Carolina. 20 of them were trespassing. This includes two in the Elon Burlington area. Smythe says this is often because people underestimate how dangerous the trains can be. They certainly don't stop on a dime. 
um, and their conductors are very concerned with those things. So they try to look out for that, but that's not always possible. On a Friday afternoon, we had a camera recording for just an hour and saw 44 people cross the tracks by this break in the fence near West End Terrace. I think most people think that they could hear a train if it's coming by. Though the train only rolls through Elon's campus a few times a day, police want students to remember the law when it's time to cross the tracks. Michelle Alfini, Elon Local News. The last related uh, train-related fatality in the Elon Burlington area was in late January, but there hasn't been a fatality of an Elon student since 2007. Two more names are now on the list for 2016 presidential candidates. Senator Marco Rubio has announced his candidacy on the other side of the aisle. Some called it the worst kept secret in Washington. Hillary Clinton announced yesterday she's also running. She's the first Democrat to officially announce their candidacy. Earlier this month, Republicans Ted Cruz and Rand Paul announced their candidacies. With four candidates in the running, social media parodies were bound to come with them, and another Hillary was being tossed around to run in 2016. A political parody account for actress and pop star Hillary Duff with the slogan, Ready for Hillary, popped up on Facebook. Stay with ELN as we continue to cover the 2016 presidential election. Now we have some news from the UNC hospital on first-year student Gabriela Rosales. Her condition continues to improve after being hit by a car four weeks ago. Rosales' Caring Bridge site says she is able to breathe without a ventilator, and the tube which monitors her intracranial pressure has been removed. The latest post on the site, which came Sunday morning, says she can now open her eyes and blink. Rosales' mother, Carmencita Tehran, also wrote, The road to recovery is going to happen with small steps, but we are hopeful that she will continue to get stronger each day. Elon's associate chaplain for Catholic Life, Father Jerry Waterman, visited Rosales in the hospital. When I was there yesterday, she is looking around, she's breathing, uh, she's touching, but she's unaware yet. So we're waiting for that awareness part. Family is very hopeful. The doctors and staff are giving them great hope. Check elonlocalnews.com for the link to donate to Rosales' recovery fund. Elon often receives criticism for its lack of racial diversity, but recently the university has been criticized for lacking diversity in a way that's harder to see, socioeconomic diversity. In a column published on the Education News and Analysis website, Hershinger, Elon ranks third in the list of America's least socioeconomically diverse colleges. According to the U.S. Department of Education, only 9% of Elon students receive Pell Grants or federal grants for students from families making less than $60,000 a year. But Greg Zeiser, Vice President of Admissions and Financial Planning, says that alumni play a role. 64% of our alumni are under the age of 40. So when I'm asked, well, you know, Elon is such a strong and popular institution, why is the endowment smaller? Well, keep in mind that most of our alumni, because we've grown so quickly, haven't hit their, their philanthropic stride, so to speak. The Elon commitment says the university plans to triple its endowment by 2020. Trees budding, flowers blooming, and grass thriving on Elon's campus might make things beautiful. There's one ugly thing that comes with it all. Pollen. The golden dust is out in full force making me sneeze. Me too. And we have two reporters to update us on all the pollen levels in the area. First, Paige Peroso is in downtown Elon with the weather. Paige. Thanks, Gary and Jasmine. Well, sadly, the beautiful weather we had this past weekend is not here to stay, at least for this week. We're expecting a lot of rain, and while those April showers bring May flowers, they also wash away the pollen. Now, today the pollen count was a whopping 10.8, when it's usually in the low nines around the springtime. The rain, though, will lower the count, so you might feel a little allergy relief the next coming week. Tuesday's pollen count is only predicted to be a 0.9. As for what you can expect temperature wise, the whole week will be pretty much cloudy in the low 70s, so no summer tan will be coming your way. With rain predicted all week, Tuesday and Thursday are the worst, with more than 80% chance of rain each day, so don't forget your umbrella. That's your pollen and weather update. I'm Paige Peroso. Back to you. Thanks, Paige. Now our Ashley Boley is under the yokes for some tips on how to avoid the pollen. Ashley, what can I do to help out my sinuses because I am struggling? 
Thanks, Jasmine. First, try taking an antihistamine for itchy eyes and sniffling, or eye drops made specifically for allergies can relieve irritated eyes. While decongestants can help relieve sinuses, try using nasal spray and gargling salt water to get rid of any pollen trapped in your nasal membranes and throat. You can also try wearing sunglasses outside to keep the pollens out of your eyes. Close your windows when you're driving in your car, when you're off campus or on campus, and make sure that you, it might sound obvious, but you wanna stay inside at all times. Exercise in the gym, eat inside, and even remove your clothing and shoes when you come home for the day. Back to you in the studio. Our Ashley Boley under the Oaks tonight. Thanks, Ashley. This week is Holocaust Remembrance Week. The eight-day period begins the Sunday before the Jewish observance of Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. Here at Elon, Hillel and members of this past winter term's Holocaust Journey Study Abroad program will host, host several events commemorating the week. At College Coffee on Tuesday, a special Holocaust Remembrance Week table will pass out different colored ribbons in remembrance of groups targeted by the Nazis, including the Jews, the LGBTQIA community, and Jehovah's Witnesses, among others. Starting at sunrise at 6.15 a.m. and ending at sunset at 5.45 p.m. on Thursday, student and faculty volunteers will be holding a reading of the names, saying names of people who died during the Holocaust. A full list of this week's events can be found on our Facebook page. When we come back, Elon Bond raised thousands of dollars this weekend. Their slogan is for the kids and two of those miracle children shared their stories. Coming up. And later, we'll take you to a local farm that puts communities first. For the kids or hashtag FTK is what Elon Thon is all about. There are 22 Miracle families that attended Elon Thon this year, and I sat down with two families who come together every year for the event. I go to Elon. I go to Elon Thon, okay. For 10-year-old Kate Wingate, Elon Thon is one of her favorite events of the year. So much fun just getting to see other kids that go to Duke and know how it feels to be different. Kate is a miracle child. She was diagnosed with juvenile arthritis in her feet at 18 months old. But that doesn't stop her from enjoying the 24-hour dance marathon with one of her best friends, Josh Paris. I would have. say that Elon Thon is our favorite, right? Elon Thon is really the best. It's so much fun hanging out with all these great students. The pair met two years ago at a Duke Children's Hospital gala and have been close ever since. 11-year-old Josh was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of six, and after 42 months of chemotherapy and a long list of medications, he is on his way to recovery. I'm here now, and I'm done with my chemo and done with my cancer, and it's just really amazing for me. Debbie Paris and Brooke Wingate, Josh and Kate's mothers, have been able to support each other through it all. They say events like Elon Thon keep their spirits high. All of the students here are so supportive. They want to be with these kids. They want to be around them. They don't care what's wrong with them. It is something that I don't even think these students can fully grasp just how big this is for us. And the Miracle Children feel the same. I can dance. I can run. Sure, my feet hurt, but it's just great to have, like, being partially cured, I guess. They do it for us and they do it to raise money and to make hope. The $180,000 raised goes to Duke Children's Hospital to continue to help kids like Kate and Josh. And here with a quick look inside Elon Thon is our Justin Beagle who danced for 24 hours. Justin, what was it like? Well, Gary, let me tell you that my feet and my knees, basically my entire lower body is still hurting, but it was all for a good cause. I was one of the 49 students who danced for all 24 hours, and if you weren't sticking around for the entire day, here is what you missed. Elon Thud made roughly $4,000 more this year than they did in 2014. We heard from 20 Miracle Children throughout the event, all of whom have sought some sort of treatment from Duke's Children's Hospitals. To keep students moving for the 24 hours, there was a musical performance like Elon bon Band Knockout Perez and instructors from Campus Rec teaching Zuma in a hip-hop class. It was a long day, but I know that for the more than 1,400 registered dancers, that what kept us going was a smile on all the children's faces. For full coverage of Elon Thon, check out elonlocalnews.com. 
It's National Volunteer Week, and one nonprofit farm just 15 minutes from Elon has started its spring work season. Our Sky Cowens was there over the weekend and learned how they're making, it, making a difference in the community. Racing and rushing have become engraved in our daily lives, but at Peace Haven Community Farm, it's all about being mindful. I think we are about being present to what is happening at the moment, at the time, and that's an incredible gift. The word community in its name not only refers to the 89 acres of sustainable farmland where volunteers come to work, but also to the affordable housing community for adults with special needs. And so that opportunity to work with them, live with them, uh, grow food together is really a chance for us to, all of us to learn and grow together. The house that sits on top of the hill is home to four core members with special needs and three caregivers. The group moved in this December once the home was finished being built. Molly Barker says she has loved it so far. I have, I have people I love and I have family, I, I have family I love. The home was named Susan's View after Susan Elliott, one of the founders along with her husband and Bob Cochran and his wife. Susan died from breast cancer in 2009. As the parents of children with special needs, the goal was to create a place where special needs adults could live a normal life. We named it Susan's View, thinking that it's maybe Susan's view of all of us continuing to work together. Cochran says that plans for the future include building a small neighborhood of homes. Not only are the core members nourished by the hands and the hearts that show up to be a part of Peace Haven, but I think it would be challenging, difficult for someone to walk onto this farm and leave unchanged. Sky Cowens, Elon Local News. Along with living and working on the farm, Peace Haven also helps its core members find jobs and get involved in the local community. With tax day less than 48 hours away, you may be thinking more about your spending. We'll have tips for you after the break. Student-produced musical numbers were showcased over the weekend in Jaeger Hall for the Music Theater Department's Grand Night. Students waited outside for nearly an hour to get a seat for the production which showcased talent from all grades in the department. Grand Night happens often, happens once a semester, and these performances were the last for the seniors, making it an emotional evening. The show ends with the same song every year where the seniors reminisce on their four years and sing to their younger colleagues. Musical Theater Department Coordinator Catherine McNeila believes Grand Night allows the students to explore their talents beyond performance. I think the most important part of this performance is that it is student choreographed and student music directed. Some students will find that they have great talents in these areas and that they'll go on to be directors and choreographers and music directors. If you want to see more from the Musical Theater Department, they will be performing in Next to Normal, April 23rd to the 27th. And if home is far away from Elon, like myself in New Jersey, you might be looking for a place to store all of your belongings for the summer. While storage units in the area are filling up, one new option has come to town. Help you store it. Our Charlie Budd has the story. Finding a place to store your belongings for three months can be tough. That's why Elon Jr. Sean Barry co-founded Help You Store It with his brothers. And what the idea of the company is, is that you're going to pack up your stuff in our boxes and we will pick it up from your dorm, we'll store it for the summer in our, in our storage facilities, and then we will re-deliver it to your new dorm come three months later after the summer. The company started in Pennsylvania, but it's made its way to Elon, and unlike other facilities in the area, you can still rent a unit. We've booked the storage facilities well, well out in advance that we actually have enough facilities around the area. The website also includes services to store small, medium, and large items and an additional price added onto their package deal. We actually just do it based on how much room in the storage unit is it going to take up. 
and the price is affordable for those on the college budget, around $190 to $250 for the entire summer. So far we've been done pretty good. We had well over 100 students sign up last year in a couple schools up in Philadelphia, and we're hoping to um, have a decent number of students in North Carolina, and we're hoping that Elon students um, really buy into this idea. Charlie Budd, Elon Local News. The company's flyers are posted around campus with discount codes that can save you 10% on your final order. With exactly 40 days until graduation for all the seniors like me, which I don't want to think about, besides a job, there's one thing we all want and that is money. But even with dwindling bank accounts, money might be something we might spend way too much of, especially in college. With just a few weeks until becoming a postgrad, it's time to learn how to manage your budget. Our Christy Matino took a look on how Elon students spend their money with some tips on how you can spend yours. I do. I do have a, a monthly budget. And I have like multiple credit cards I've been using to build my credit. I, get, I mean, I'm certainly not self-sufficient. I can't say that. Budgeting can be a daunting concept for many college students. You know, when you're taking out cash, it might, you, know, you can physically see the dent it puts in your wallet. When you use a credit card, it's just easy to swipe and go. But assistant professor in finance Chris Harris says learning how to watch your spending during college will keep you on a steady economic track for life after graduation. Just get in the habit of not spending every penny that you earn. And then second, start to save something. According to a recent study by USA Today, most four-year university college students are struggling to manage their finances, leading some professors to think it is important for students to care about their financial credit as much as their class credit. Credit is not always a bad thing, but, but it can really be a negative thing when you don't know how to control yourself and how to control this, the credit. The USA Today study shows a drop of 10% between 2012 and 2014 in the number of students surveyed who said they would follow a budget. The you have your finances, the more able you are to pursue whatever it is you're passionate about. Here at Elon, most students say they spend their money on both passions and daily necessities. Like. I spend money on food and basically nothing else. Um, I just like to shop. Online shopping especially, like I have a problem. <laughs> Whether you're a thrifty spender or new to the concept of cash, Harris says to keep in mind managing money is all a learning experience. Christy Matino, Elon Local News. For more practical tips on managing your bank account, check out elonlocalnews.com right now for tips on how to manage credit cards and helpful apps to monitor spending right from your smartphone. I'm Zora Stevenson. Coming up, a wild week in sports and with Elon Athletics giving back at Elonthon. We'll have that story and your week ahead in sports next. I'm Zora Stevenson for ELN Sports. We start tonight with an update on junior track runner Jennifer Esposito. Elon Athletics spokesperson Dan Weyer says Esposito is suspended indefinitely from participating in track activities after she was arrested early Tuesday morning on assault and battery charges. According to the police report, officers responded to a call on Haggard Avenue just after midnight and Esposito was arrested after assaulting her boyfriend who received minor injuries. Her $500 bail was posted later Tuesday afternoon. Wire added Esposito may be reinstated to the track team in the fall. Esposito was named the Colonial Athletic Association Player of the Week for the week of March 24th after winning the 400 meter hurdles at the Coastal Carolina Invitational. The football team was back on the gridiron this weekend, wrapping up their second week of spring practices with a Saturday morning scrimmage. It was offense versus defense as the coaches pitted their team against itself, providing the team with more realistic simulations. With pads on, the team was able to put what they had learned into practice practice, showing the coaches what still needs work. Spring practices are about halfway through. In the remaining practices, Coach Skrosky and his staff will work on fundamentals to prepare for summer camp and preseason. The team has two more weeks of practices leading up to their spring game at Rhodes Stadium on April 25th. We know the men's basketball team can shoot, dunk, and run sprints, but how about dancing? During this weekend's Elonthon Marathon, the team showed off their smooth moves alongside the Elon dance team. Lots of smiles and laughing as they received a loud round of applause from the dancers. We spoke with junior point guard Sam Hirschberger after the dance. He said it's something the team looks forward to every year and they had a blast putting on the performance. 
Tennis is heading to Virginia this weekend for the CAA Championship Tournament debut hosted by William and Mary. The men's team ended their regular season with a 9-12 record with a win over East Carolina on Saturday. And with its victory over North Carolina Central University at home Saturday, the women's team ended their season 14-7. Elon is coming off a 2014 season in which both teams won the Southern Conference Tournament and made an appearance in the NCAA Tournament. Seeding was announced this afternoon for the CAA Tournament. The men's team earned a two-seed and will take on seven-seeded Drexel Friday at Virginia. The women's team earned a three-seed and will be playing six-seeded Towson also on Friday. Stay updated with ELN Sports Friday afternoon. That's all I got for you guys today. I'm Zora Stevenson. Back to you, Jasmine and Gary. That's all we have for you. I'm Gary Grumbach. And I'm Jasmine Turner. For more ELN news, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We're always online at ELNLocalNews.com. Have a great week, ELN.